Kevin Durant reached his professional pinnacle a little less than two months ago, finally adding an NBA title and finals MVP to his basketball mantelpiece. The celebration was fierce that night and during the days that followed. But life moves on, the summer nights lengthen and things return to off-season normalcy. Durant has mostly spent his time in Los Angeles the past couple of months, but HES still been traveling plenty, including a recent trip to India to tour the country, build community courts and even set a Guinness World Record for the largest basketball lesson ever 3,459 Indian children participated. On Thursday, Durant, who is now back in the U.S., took time to chat with The Athletic about his trip and much more included his first public comments about his decision to take nearly $10 million less than he could have gotten this summer, plus he dissects some of the off-season's biggest moves, including Chris Paul shifting to the Rockets and Paul George joining Russell Westbrook and the Thunder. Here's the transcript cue first of all, India. You just got back. What was that like, Durant? Um, it was a unique experience. I went with no expectation, no view on what it's supposed to be like. I usually go to places where I at least have a view in my head. India, I'm thinking I'm going to be around palaces and royalty and gold, basically thought I was going to Dubai. Then when I landed there, I saw the culture and how they live and it was rough. It's a country that's 20 years behind in terms of knowledge and experience. You see cows in the street, monkeys running around everywhere, hundreds of people on the side of the road, a million cars and no traffic violations just a bunch of underprivileged people there and they want to learn how to play basketball. That s was really, really dope to me. Q was there a particular situation a person a thing that was eye-opening on the trip Durant yeah. As I was driving up to the Taj Mahal, like I said, I thought that this would be holy ground, super protected, very very clean. And as I'm driving up, it's like, s, this used to remind me of some neighborhoods I would ride through as a kid mud in the middle of the street, houses were not finished but there were people living in them. No doors. No windows. The cows in the street, stray dogs and then, boom, Taj Mahal, one of the seven wonders of the world. It's like holy yes, this was built 500 years ago and everyone comes here. It's just an eye-opener. Q okay, let's go back to the beginning of the summer. First of all you win the title. You are now two months removed. Does anything daily feel different finally being an NBA champ, Durant nah? It doesn't. I mean maybe more people know who I am, but my life didnt change. I didnt change anything. I still do the same stuff. Q let's shift to free agency a few weeks later. Everyone knows what you did, taking that nearly $10 million pay cut. Was it a no? If Andre Guadala needs this much, it'll take this much kind of situation. How did that decision come together? Durant, well, I'm a smart guy and I want to keep this thing going and looking at Andre and Sean Livingston and, and Steph Curry, they all should make the most money that they can make and get what they deserve. Because they were all underpaid and I knew at some point they'd want to get what they deserve. So I just took a step back and let the chips fall where they may. Then I took it in my hands. I wanted to keep the team together and I thought it was going to help the ownership bring all the guys back. And on top of that, it's my money. It's my decision. I can do what the hell I want with it. Q were you surprised by some of the blowback during they only criticized it because it's the Warriors and it's me and they love to hate anything we do right now. A lot of players have taken pay cuts. It wasnt that I wanted the praise. I've learned from Tim Duncan and Dirk Nowitzki and how it has helped them over the years and I thought, if they did it, why can't I? Why should NTI sacrifice people wanted the money to break us up and IDIDNT want that to happen? Q I'm sure you got quite the reaction from Bob Myers and the front office when you brought them the number. Durant yeah, like I said, I'm a grown man in this league and I'm at the point of my life and career where I'm able to dictate what I want to do with my future. So me and my business partner Rich Kleiman talked about it and when we brought it to them we knew they'd be excited because it'll definitely help the whole group. Q will you enlist Andre as your agent for your next negotiations after what he got this summer Durant nah, he got that all by himself. He got all of that. We kept him and Sean and were able to sign Nick Young and keep JaVale McGee. Q I heard you were a part of the Nick Young recruitment. Maybe not the Draymond Green lead role, but you met with him in Los Angeles. Durant I just wanted whoever Bob wanted. We talked early on and I was like, well, obviously I like Nick's game, so how can I help? We had a nice lunch and then after that, obviously, Draymond kind of took over and did the social part of it. 
Q so you guys are intact with 12 returning players including your entire core, plus a couple of other nice pieces. But the landscape around you out west has shifted a ton. I assume you've been following. What have you thought of all these moves during year? You're just seeing a lot of these GMs buckling down and saying, you know what, let's swing for the fences. Let's see what we can do. Anything can happen. You gotta respect it. Before, you've seen GMs be conservative try to save money or build through the draft every year. Just try to be okay. But teams aren't just settling for that. They're trying to win and trying to win now and they want to put the best players together. It's a great league and you want to see the best players on the biggest stage. Why not see the best players all of them on a few teams? Why not see that that's what this league is about? It's star-driven and it's good to see that the stars dictate how the league is supposed to go. Then the next group of stars will do the same and the same after that. I think that's what we're starting. QA couple of the specific moves that I want to ask you about, starting with Houston, Chris Paul and James Harden. It's an interesting pairing. What do you think, Durant? It is interesting. You have two guys that really enjoy handling the basketball but really know how hard it is to do that for 40 minutes a night, 82 games, plus 16 in the playoffs. They love handling the ball, but they know how tiring it is. They need each other to take the pressure off. James wants to catch and shoot. I think that's what all great players want to do. They don't want to dribble 100% of the time. They want to go 5,050, sometimes catch and shoot and let teammates create. I feel they both want to do that now and I think it's going to work extremely well because they're both unselfish and can shoot. They've got real skills, so I think it's going to be great for the league and obviously great for Houston. Q the other move is one you know well Paul George going to OKC. I believe he said he reached out to you to ask you a little about the organization. Durant nah, me and PGDIDNT talk much about the organization at all. I texted him congrats and told him he was going to love it there. It's just a matter of what type of team they're going to be, who's going to do what, who is going to step up. But they got Russ and PG and Steven Adams to be their big three. I think if they feed off each other, it could be great. I'm a fan of the game. So I can see if something is going to work or not and I think that's going to be a really, really great pairing. It's going to suck for us and the rest of the league. But as a fan of the game, it's going to be tight to see how they work that thing out. Q are you pumped about the West overall next year? You have a lot of new challenges. San Antonio remains. Houston and OKC we've talked about. You even have Minnesota now with Jimmy Butler. Durant it is a new landscape. And I like it. I don't know how it's going to work together, but I can't wait to see it all. It's going to be fun every night. You're going to see what you're supposed to be seeing, not a bunch of dudes you know aren't good on the court. There's going to be a bunch of talent on the floor, top to bottom. You look at Jeff Teague all the way down to Carl Anthony Towns, that's an all-star group. You have five all-star caliber players on the court for Minnesota at the same time, great talented players at once. You have Teague, Jimmy Butler, Andrew Wiggins. Who's the four over there? Gorg, we die and Q, they just signed Taj Gibson. Duranto, yeah, Taj Gibson, then Towns. So you got, what, four all-star caliber players over there on one team. And why not why should NT you have that that's what fans want to see. They don't want to see all role players and a couple good guys. Nah, you want to see all the best players. That's what Minnesota did. Thibs coach Tom Thibodeau, you know, HES got some co-jones. I knew he was going to pull something off. Q sir how's the rest of your summer looking I hear you have some type of parade in your hometown of Seat Pleasant MD coming up August 17th and you're supposed to be bringing the trophy with you. Durant yeah I just got a call the other day about my town wanting to do something. My mom got everything set up properly and I can't wait to celebrate with all the people I grew up with. Q going back to India and broadening it out a bit. You and Rich have had this initiative the past few years. Durant it's just a goal with our foundation to help build the game of basketball around the country and around the world at the beginner's level, which is playing outdoors and walking down the street from your house and discovering the game. We want to give that opportunity to everyone. Hopefully it sparks that love for the game. To go to India with the NBA and set up an academy, it was a no-brainer. Q and you've become YouTube obsessed along the way, right you got your own channel and did an hour-long documentary after the finals. Durant yeah, man, that kind of happened out of nowhere, that YouTube thing, but it's really taken off.
I like it. It's different. I really like communicating with the fans on there. I like the content. It's dope. Q how did that come about? It's kind of a random medium to become your communication platform. Durant I just wanted another space where I could create stuff that I liked and show people a different side of NBA players and me as a person. I knew as a kid I always wanted to see a quick soundbite from my favorite players and know what they were doing outside of the court. I wanted to provide that. Then it came out of nowhere. I went to a meeting with YouTube and I thought they were just going to help me run my page. But it just kind of took off from there, where I got almost half a million subscribers in a couple months by dropping movies on there and some other stuff. For full coverage, subscribe here. Here's the big behind-the-scenes documentary that Durant put out after the season.